So this is the time of the year when Samsung releases its premium A series phones and today I have the Samsung Galaxy A55 with me that has just been launched globally. There's also a slightly cheaper Galaxy A35 whose review I have just posted a few days ago and you can check that out from somewhere here. The Galaxy A55 here is a slightly more premium variant of the Galaxy A35 and you can see that from the price itself. The pricing is actually quite higher this year starting at 40,000 Indian rupees for the base A128 GB variant and if you look at the overall specs it does seem a bit overpriced. However, I think for most people looking for a premium mid-range phone from a brand like Samsung, this is actually a very good and a well-balanced smartphone. First of all, Samsung has improved the build of this phone by quite a margin. It is now more robust since we get a Gorilla Glass Victus Plus protection for the display, a Gorilla Glass back and a brushed aluminium frames. Hence, it actually has a very solid heft to it and feels premium to hold. You also get a sculpted shape here just like on the Galaxy A35 on the right side of the frame which helps for a more comfortable grip. Now compared to the Galaxy S24 series which has a matte finish, the back here is glossy but the good thing is that it does not catch smudges and fingerprints that easily so that is better in my opinion. The overall design of this phone is also quite premium to look at with a similar camera layout. Um, as for color options, there are four options to choose from. I have this in this ice blue color variant, but you can also go with other options like black, pink or lemon. So yeah, a solid A plus in terms of design and build. And uh, by the way, you also get IP67 dust and water protection here, just like what we got on previous A series smartphones. The areas that I have to nitpick here are those uh, sharp edges, which can be a bit frustrating for longer usage. And second is the fact that you get extremely thick bezels on this display. So maybe Samsung could have trimmed it down a little bit. But let me tell you that the actual display quality on the Galaxy A55 is top notch. It's easily the best display in its class. It is now slightly bigger at 6.6 .6 inches and it looks brighter too. So I had no difficulty viewing contents outdoors in direct sunlight. The minimum possible brightness on this display is also excellent. As expected from a Samsung phone, you get excellent colors with punchy output in the default vivid mode. Uh, there's no unnecessary oversharping in videos like we see on most Chinese phones. The color retention is also best in the business and the touch is quite responsive on this display as well. Samsung has also improved the audio here it's a stereo speaker that is more louder now so watching movies and tv shows here is um, quite flagship like on this phone the in-display fingerprint scanner is uh, still optical it's not ultrasonic like we get in s series phones but it's fast and gets the job done now for the performance you get the new samsung made exynos 1480 chipset here which is slightly more powerful than the exynos 1380 chipset that we got on last year's galaxy a54 so the day-to-day task runs fine here. Uh, the 120 hertz refresh rate is also quite optimized. Uh, it hovers between 60 and 120 hertz and works without hustle for most apps. There's no jitters or lags while navigating through the UI, scrolling through the news feed or watching Instagram reels either. But comparing it with similarly priced phones like the OnePlus 12R or the iQOO Neo 9 Pro, the Galaxy A55 just feels a little um, slow. In fact, it scored half in almost all the benchmarks that I ran. And just like we saw with the Exynos 1380, the 1480 is also not optimized for gaming. I am averaging just 30 FPS in PUBG Mobile and Genshin Impact, scores that are comparable to budget phones of 2024. This new chipset actually has the AMD Xclipse 530 GPU, so I kind of expected it to perform better. Even in optimized games like Call of Duty, the max FPS it can go is just 38. So maybe it can get better with future updates, but it looks unlikely given the Exynos history. Hence, if you play a lot of AAA games, this phone is simply not for you. Now, talking about the software, this is the one area where the Galaxy A55 truly, truly shines. The One UI is just too good to use and look at, and it has matured a lot over the years. There's little to no bloatware, and I can disable even the remaining ones if I want to. You will also not see any kind of ads or annoying bugs here. The X-axis vibration motor has a soft and precise feedback, so experience-wise, it's very good, especially if you're a light user. 
Samsung is also promising four years of OS and five years of security patches. And that's not just a promise, by the way, they are one of the few smartphone brands that delivers on time security patches and Android versions. So when the Android 15 rolls out, say at the end of this year, you are going to receive that new and refined software experience early on this phone versus the competition. However, one thing that's still a question mark here is how is this Exynos chipset going to hold up in two to three years time? So in this regard, maybe Samsung should have gone with a more faster chipset like the Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 or even the Diamond City 8300, which you will see on much cheaper phones than this one. The one good thing I want to highlight about the Exynos chipset is that it does not heat up at all. Uh, Samsung has included a vapor chamber cooling system here and that could be the reason, but uh, no matter matter what you do, the temperature on the Galaxy A55 does not exceed 40 degrees. The Exynos 1480 chipset is also based on a more energy efficient 4nm process node and couple that with a 5000 mAh battery, I am getting excellent battery life on this phone. It easily lasts me a full day of usage with around 7 to 8 hours of screen on time, that too on a heavy usage. Charging this phone is a bit slow. It only supports 25 watt wire charging, which takes the phone from 0 to 100% in about 1.5 hours. Okay, lastly, let's talk about the cameras. And this is the big, big plus point for this phone. Hence, if you're looking for a reliable camera phone under 40,000 Indian rupees, this is actually the phone for you. The reason why the Galaxy A55 does so much better than the competition is not because of how big its camera sensors are, but it's because of the classic Samsung optimization that looks pleasing to the eyes with the right amount of contrast. As you can see from these samples, the photos have a nice color output with excellent dynamic range in shadows. Um, it also maintains the white balance very well and highlight control during daylight is also done superbly. And even when I'm taking close-up shots like this, it has a nice bokeh sharpness and background blur and the overall photo does not look dull at all. The 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera can also take some good shots but I found it to be less reliable. It does not have the best of details and exposure control could be a hit or a miss but I don't want to complain that much since it's better than most phones you get in this price range. During low light the main lens of the Galaxy A55 also does a good job in retaining the details and it does not mess up the colors too. It's nice and pleasing, OIS also works pretty well. But I found that the ultra wide angle camera struggles to bring in more light and hence they look dark with compromised dynamic range. You can turn on night mode, but I found that in most instances, the dark mode makes the images look very artificial. In fact, I found its cheaper sibling, the A35, doing a better job in night mode versus the A55. So I do hope that Samsung fixes this with an update very soon. But one thing I wished this phone had, especially considering the price hike, is a 3x telephoto lens. The Galaxy S21 FE that's usually on sale under 30,000 rupees comes with a 3x lens with which you can take some beautiful 76mm portraits. Um, that was something I missed while using this phone in particular. Here you can only take 1x 25mm wide portraits, which just feels too old school. Maybe Samsung should have offered 2x portraits by cropping the photos just like how Pixel phones do. But that is missing here too. That being said, the 1x portraits have good skin tone and you do look good in the portraits taken from this phone. Uh, similarly, I like its selfies too. It has a good amount of details, HDR, and looks quite natural. The Galaxy A55 can also record up to 4K 30fps from all the lenses and while Samsung has disabled OIS, you can get satisfying output both during daytime and low light. It does have slight jitters if you move or vlog around, but if you have steady hands, you can take some good detailed shots. Okay, so this brings me to the conclusion. And yeah, for a starting price of 40,000 plus an additional 1,500 for the charger, the pricing of the Galaxy A55 is of course a bit on the higher side. But if you look past that, I believe it's a solid premium mid-range phone, especially if you don't play competitive games that often. But if performance is what you're aiming for, I think you should definitely go for the OnePlus 12R instead. It's a much faster phone and you're going to enjoy most titles at 60 or 90 FPS without any frame drops. However, if you're someone who prefers Samsung's brand value, good looking design with proper IP rating on top of reliable everyday experience, be it while clicking photos with your friends or just scrolling through Instagram reels for hours or providing all day battery backup, 
the Galaxy A55 hits a sweet spot in delivering good overall package. But let me remind you again, this phone is not for gaming. So everybody, that was all for my full review of the Samsung Galaxy A55. Uh, do let me know in the comments below if you would like me to compare this phone with any other smartphone. Until then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you so much for watching.